Welcome to day 21. Yay, we've made it all the way through. And how much have we learned? We've learned truckloads of stuff. So it's been amazing. Today on the show, we're just going to talk about production builds and deploying the GitHub pages. And then I'm going to uh, give you a whole bunch of resources uh, that you can track down to go further in your Angular journey. So it's going to be great. Um, let's dive in though and do some production building. Well, today is the business end of the series where we actually deploy our code. Now, the first thing I wanted to show you in this portion was uh, some switches to ng-build. So we've been using ng-build as our standard kind of build environment. And when we do a standard build with ng-build, it's going to default to using uh, developer level builds. So if we were to maybe open up our code editor, have a look at what ends up in the disk directory, you'll see there's a whole bunch of mapping files that are useful for debugging, uh, our map files and our JS files, and uh, nothing is yet compressed or minified or any of that kind of jazz. So we need to do a production build. We want to actually shrink everything down to the to the bare minimum, and there's all sorts of good gear built into Webpack to do that. So the way we do that is ng build, and then we can pass switches. So there's a few ways of doing this. You can just do minus minus prod, which is probably the easiest way. And let's just do that, and we'll uh, maybe close that out and let it shrink that down. Uh, so when we do a minus minus prod, we're basically setting the environment to production and the style of build to production. Now you can actually pass some switches to build where you say ng build minus minus env equals prod minus minus target equals prod, etc. And these can use overridden files that you use in source environments and you can customize your build. So for instance, when we do a default build, we end up with this one where production set to false. And uh, you can check out the Angular CLI docs to see what kinds of stuff you can you can use this environment level uh, gear for. Anyway, our dist is now run and we see we've now got uh, everything is minified and um, shrunk down to the absolute minimum and that's ready to be deployed. Uh, so while we've got that, let's actually deploy it. And one cute feature that is also built into the CLI is the ability to deploy to GitHub. So the command you need to know is ng github dash pages colon deploy and then you give it a switch which is going to be your commit message. Now if you've never played with GitHub pages before, what GitHub pages are, they're basically a branch on your current repo. So it's actually going to change to create a new branch if you need to or change to it if there's one existing and do a, a commit of the generated files onto that branch. Now GitHub treats pages on that GitHub pages branch uh, uh, differently. So it actually uses those pages to publish to a static kind of uh, entry point where you can actually see your app running. Well, typically it's used for publishing static pages and stuff around an app, but it can also be used for showing example apps like we're going to do right now. So let's just say um, the first official release of Twit ng. For this to work, you actually have to have the SSH style GitHub commit stuff set up. You can Google how to do all that stuff. Uh, on Windows, you need to be running uh, Pageant, which is like an SSH agent, and there's equivalents for other platforms. So that will now actually do our build. And once it's done our build, it will move it to a branch on this current uh, repo called GitHub Pages, and it will then push those pages up to uh, GitHub. So you'll see actually my editor's just disappeared here. That's because uh, uh, it's now about to switch to a different branch. Okay, so that's now published and it says deployed. Visit glennasmith.github.io slash twitng. I'm going to control click on that to have a look at the actual deployed site. It's going to fire up a browser, head me over there, the twitng. And there we have our application actually running on the internet. How great is that? This is a test of tweeting. Remember, we've got our fake backend as well. We can tweet that and that's working great. I can favorite and retweet it and everything is looking great. So that is the deployment process. So today it was really just about that production build, minus minus prod, and things you can do with environment if you're keen with minus minus env, uh, and also about using GitHub pages for deployment. Hang five though, because now we're going to talk about some resources for the next stage of your journey. Well, stuff's all deployed and live on the internet, and that's pretty exciting to be able to actually send a link to our friends about stuff that we've built. So that's kind of cool. So now that we've finished off all the technical content, I thought I'd just give you a few resources to help you along in the next phase of your journey. The first one I want to point you to is the NG newsletter. Now, this is a weekly kind of free newsletter operation, but everything on it has been great value. There's some beginner stuff, there's some intermediate stuff, some advanced stuff. I found it really good value and definitely worth the sub. I'll link to it in the show notes. The second thing that I really wanted to point 
helped you too is if you're into podcasts, the Adventures in Angular podcast is super good. I've been listening to that for the last few months and I have really enjoyed it. They have some great guests. They often have core committers on the show, uh, but they always have interesting guests and it's a panel sort of operation and uh, definitely worth a listen. Uh, check it out. If you're into blogs, uh, I'll point you at the ThoughtRam blog. These guys are Black Belt Angular 2 guys. Uh, they're committers, uh, but they also write some really great articles. I understand about half of what they write. It's pretty hardcore, uh, but the half that I do understand, I really appreciate, and it's really professionally done. So definitely worth checking that one out. Now, if you're going to pony some cash up and buy some stuff, there's a few things I can point you to as well. Uh, in terms of a book, the NG Book 2, uh, which I'll link to, has been pretty good value. It's uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's too expensive for what it is, uh, but it does cover the stuff really well and they do iterate quite frequently on releases and the writing is really good quality and lots of interesting sides along the way. So if you're gonna buy one book, uh, go buy that one. Uh, just get the base bottle though, because you can get it with a screencast and all that stuff, but the screencasts are rudimentary. If you've done this series, then you, you uh, have absolutely passed anything that you're gonna get value out of there. So. Um, that's really worth having a look at. If you subscribe to Pluralsight, anything by John Papa is definitely worth having a look at. Uh, he is just the world-class presenter and uh, just great content as well and definitely worth checking out. Finally, um, I would love you to subscribe to this channel. I'm going to keep posting stuff here, Angular and otherwise related. I'm really thinking about the idea of doing a Git course, which may be coming up soon. Uh, and one other thing, I'm really interested in putting together a really basic kind of Angular 2 book for just like a few dollars kind of thing, uh, which might just cover the core stuff. A lot of the stuff out there is uh, pretty high end, talking $40, $50, and I just don't think it's delivering the kind of value that everyday developers need. You don't really need to know everything about the framework. It's just what you need to know right now to get your work done. So if you'd be interested in a basic book like that, uh, maybe bundle a, screen, a set of screencasts done a bit more professionally than these ones here, uh, just thumbs up this video to let me know that that's a potential viable thing to pursue next. Other than that, thanks so much for your journey. This has been a wonderful time these last 21 days. I've got so much great feedback and encouragement and you guys have been just fantastic. Um, look forward to hanging out a bit more down the track, but until then, go build some awesome stuff.